Hi, and thanks for tuning in for today's Connect video, Tuesday, January 24th. And a uh, cold morning out there today. Hey, a couple things to remind you of. We have our Our You New Lunch coming up this coming Sunday. Um, January 29th is the date for the lunch. It'll be after the second service, but you need to RSVP for this lunch. It's This lunch is for those who are fairly new to the church and wanting to get some initial information about the church. Mission, vision, core values, and then some next step stuff. And uh, myself and my wife Kim, we host this lunch along with a couple of other leaders typically. We'd love to have you a part of this, but you have to RSVP by tomorrow, Wednesday, the 25th, okay? And uh, this lunch will be held in Chapel Hall after second hour service this coming Sunday. And also, we uh, had the public launch for the updated church app this past Sunday. I just want to kind of remind you of that again and encourage you, if you do not have the app, please download the app uh, from whatever app store you normally get the app for your kind of device, and um, we've we've been able to personalize the app so the the experience you'll have using the app will be specifically for you. And the the purpose of this is so that we can come alongside and help you grow in your faith. That's one of the mission points of our church to reach people for Christ and to help them grow in the faith. And so this is one of the ways that we can use this app as a very um, helpful tool to define and help guide you down the path for spiritual growth. So would love to have you download that app. It's a personalized dashboard that you will personalize for yourself. You can update your own profile. It will help you know what's going on here at the church, but also what the next step is as far as Christian growth and uh, very helpful for you. So would encourage you to download that. If you have questions, contact the office. There'll be a a help desk table, if you will, in the lobby this coming Sunday also. Now, last Sunday was Sanctity of Life Sunday, and in last week's video, though, I started the discussion on the topic of abortion and the life issue, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at what the Bible says about the unborn baby, along with a few other items. Uh, just for your information, next week's video, we're going to stick with the life issue, but we're going to talk about the life issue from the other end of the spectrum. And we're going to talk about euthanasia, medical-assisted suicide, which in fact is something th the Canadian government is actively promoting now, and it's quite frightening. But we'll cover that a little bit and talk about that issue. Now, as I mentioned in last Tuesday's Connect video, it was this past June, June 24th of 2022, when the, the Supreme Court handed down their decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. That, that Roe v. Wade was decided or by the court in 1973, so a long time now it has been overturned. And the overturning of Roe v. Wade did not make abortion illegal in the United States. It simply sends the issue now to the states for each state to decide how they will deal with it. So it's no longer a federal thing. It's going to be a state-by-state -state issue. This, this means, this has some implications for us, this means that we will have some sort of referendum initiative or ballot proposition to vote on, likely in this next election, but also in many to come. As Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, Voting to support life, voting to protect the unborn and the elderly, is one of the ways that we can be salt and light in the world today. As followers of Christ, the questions that we need to be able to answer are these. What does the Bible say about abortion? What does God think of the unborn? Let me take you through three verses that I think help us understand the clarity that Scripture gives here. Number one, the most powerful, at least for me, and most clear statement of God's intent for the baby in the womb and the personhood and the humanity of the baby in the womb is found in Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. You can read with me here. For you, God, formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. You, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. God views the baby in the womb as a person, a future. There's already a purpose for their life. The preborn baby is not a clump of cells. He or she is a person who is loved, and God has a plan for his or her life. The second clear statement of the personhood and the plan that God has for the baby in the womb is found in an Old Testament passage also, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Jeremiah says to God of himself, he says, before, this is God, excuse me, God speaking to Jeremiah about Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. You know, there's a consistent theme in the Bible when it comes to passages that speak of the unborn baby. God is forming the baby, taking great care. God already knows this person, and God has plans for this person. Those are the things you see in all these passages. The third passage that we have is found in Galatians 1, a verse that we touched on this past Sunday. Here Paul writes, But when he who had set me apart before I was born, and who called me by his grace. Paul here makes it very clear, before he was born, God already had a plan for Paul's life. And the implication here is very clear. The preborn baby is a person with value, with dignity, with a purpose. And we should protect the unborn in the same way we would protect a two-year-old child, a teenager, or a 35-year-old adult. All right, those are three passages that tells us what God thinks of abortion, what, what the Bible says, what God says about the preborn. All right. Now, two more things. The first thing is that some people might not care what the Bible says about this issue, right? Some people don't care that what the Bible says about the value of the preborn person. But we who are pro-life, we have science and we have philosophy on our side of this argument. And I want to share with you a pro-life argument that is not out of verses of Scripture. It's not limited to Christianity. It certainly finds commonality in biblical truth, but it's rooted in logic and in basic philosophy, I guess you could say, and medical science, without being all uh, highbrow. All right? It's called the SLED test. All right? This is rooted in science and philosophy, and it simply helps us realize some of the basic truths about the preborn person. All right? Number one is size. S is size. SLED is an acronym. S, S equals size. Do we value human life based on its size? Do we believe taller people have more or less value or dignity than shorter people? How about skinny or overweight people? Does an 8-year-old who weighs less than 80 pounds have less value than a 6'2", 215-pound man? Right? Size is one thing to think about with this topic. L is level of development. Do we really believe the only human life that deserves protection are those who are perfectly whole? What about the disabled? Or do only certain IQs above a certain number get protection under the law? What about someone's education level? Does, does, does someone's education level determine human dignity? What about skill set? Is there a minimum requirement here before we see someone as human? Right? Level of development is another issue that comes into play. Because think of the, the embryo, the baby in utero. These are all things that are smaller, right? Limited level of development, obviously. E is environment. The baby's environment is unique from ours, of course, right? It doesn't breathe oxygen like we do. So is respiration a requirement for human value? What about those who are uh, on, on a ventilator? They can't breathe on their own either. Are they of no value? Does where someone lives determine personhood. 
the preborns living in the mother's womb. Does that give them less dignity and value? D, degree of dependency. The preborn baby cannot survive on its own. They're dependent on the mother for survival, right? But does that really determine personhood and value? What about a six-month-old baby? What about a toddler? Can they survive on their own? No, they can't. What about someone with a serious illness, injury, or disability? Aren't they dependent on others for their survival? The elderly person who needs regular care and assistance? See, degree of dependency or having to be independent, that does not determine human value or dignity. Being made in the image of God gives each of us dignity and value, no matter our level of growth or abilities. So that's called the sled argument, and that can be used to demonstrate that the baby, the preborn baby, just because of those variances that the that sled stands for, right? Um, just because those things are different doesn't mean they don't have human value and dignity and should have all human rights. The second thing is for those of you who are Christians, but you are pro-choice. I struggle understanding that, but I know that there are many that are, that, that are out there. So I've made a document available for you. You can click on the link on this email to access this document. It's titled 60 Questions for Pro-Choice Christians. So please link on, uh, click on the link here and read this document and consider, as you read through it, consider what is your value system? What is the basis of truth that you are using to work through this issue? How, how are you viewing this? Through the lens of scripture and through the lens of science and philosophy and logic? Or is it a political ideology that you are simply kind of using as that grid? Now, just a couple thoughts in closing. Number one, I want you to know that if you have had an abortion in the past or there's someone in your life that you know has had an abortion, that there is healing. There is hope beyond that. There's forgiveness. There's healing. There's restoration available. And Hands of Hope is a ministry here in, T in Tucson that works with women who have an unplanned pregnancy. I mentioned last Tuesday that on their website, it says this, quote, they are the go-to resource for women and men facing unplanned pregnancies in Tucson since 1981. I would highly encourage you to check out their website that's listed right here on the screen. And uh, this is a, a page, uh, the, the kind of a screenshot of their homepage. There is great healing, great help, because the the trauma that that causes needs to be dealt with in the years ahead after an abortion, and they will help you with that. They have a tremendous ministry. would highly encourage you to con connect with them and, um, and uh, have them minister to you. Know that God loves you very much, and there is nothing that we do in this life that is beyond his love and forgiveness. Would you let me pray? Father, we thank you for your love that it is so all-encompassing. And you tell us, number one, none of us deserve anything from you, but you love us, and you, you love us even when we're enemies, when we're opposed to you, you still love us. And you're willing to forgive us when we come to you in faith and to restore us and reconcile us to yourself. So we thank you for that. I pray for everyone watching this video that we would understand this issue through the truth, through the lens of Scripture, the lens of medical reality and technology and truth, and through a, a philosophy that values life. Because we know when we don't value life, that is a danger to so many people. So, Father, I pray your blessing in that area, but I also pray your blessing for those who suffered through this, who have gone through this process, who have had an abortion. I pray, Lord, that they will come to you and you will restore them and heal them. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, hey, thanks for taking some time to tune in today. Please plan to join us this coming Sunday, uh, January 29th, for worship and uh, sermon number two in our new series, The Original Church Planter. And uh, our service is at 9.30 or 11. The live stream is available, so if you're watching this video and you're not in Tucson, you can tune in and join us via the live stream. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome week, and make sure you're a blessing to everyone that you meet this week. Bye-bye.